Hey guys, what's up? I'm outside again. I've got uh, my Graflex. I'm going for a walk and I'm shooting some uh, single sheet Velvia 100 uh, slide film in 4x5, but they are Fuji quick load, which means that they are individually uh, like packaged and I load them up into a single sheet holder and then I can shoot them one at a time. So I have six of these with me. They are expired. They were actually sent to the PO box uh, over the summer by Andreas. Uh, so thank you, Andreas. I will link to his Instagram in the description of the video. So I'm gonna walk around, I'm gonna take some shots of this expired uh, four by five slide film and we're gonna see what we get. So both Kodak and Fuji used to make these uh, single load four x five sheets. So instead of having to load them in the dark, I can just carry them around and load them into uh, a holder. Fuji made quick load and Kodak made ready load. And you could get Kodak and Fuji film holders for it, or you could use the old uh, four x five instant single shot Polaroid film holders for them as well. You're just not actually developing a Polaroid with this stuff. So now that that individual 4x5 exposure has been taken, I can just remove it from the holder. So I've only shot a few sheets of this previously before coming out here and doing this today. And just this stuff has been discontinued. Fuji and Kodak discontinued all like the quick load, ready load stuff like this quite a few years ago now. It didn't come to me in the original like uh, packaging, so I don't know exactly how long, but it's probably like 10 years or something like that. All right, time to uh, take these into the lab for E6 color reversal slide processing on these five sheets of Velvia quick load. And then uh, I'll take a look at them on a light table and then I'll scan them, take a look at the final scans if I have to adjust the color a bit because it is expired stuff. But uh, yeah, hopefully there's some good ones in there and I haven't embarrassed myself with my exposure too much. So this was my first exposure and I have to say that I'm really, really happy with this one. Uh, I love the amount of just contrast and how well it handles the brighter sunlit areas at the top here, as well as having like this nice kind of shadowy detail here down by the water. So just kind of looking at it, I can tell that the colors on this live stuff have shifted just a bit and it is more uh, just like greenish than it should be, especially in the sky here where it's just looking like a little, little off. But once I scan things and I can just kind of like shift things just a little bit. Number two. So this one is a little over, but it's actually like, it's not too bad. And it means you can see like a ton of detail here down on like the floor of the woods there. So I probably should have gone like a little less, but this one there was actually like a mistake when I was exposing where the shutter didn't stay open for as long as I wanted because I was doing a longer exposure with a, because I wanted a big depth of field. So I actually double exposed this. I exposed it again just really quickly because I was afraid I had completely missed the mark on the first one. So that's why there's some extra kind of exposure to it. it this one, definitely the, uh, the worst exposure. I missed this one. Like I really, really should have metered more for just like the mid areas here because the drive-in sign itself was actually more in shadow. So exposing completely for that means that like this looks okay. Like you can see the letters and everything and the paneling on the back of it, but everything else around it is blown out. This one, the exposure looks really good. Uh, I'm not super happy with the composition though. I definitely should have shifted the camera over and uh, leveled it just a bit because it is a little crooked on there. The last one that I took, uh, this one also looks really good. So I'm really happy with this one as well. The, just like the detail and looking at the water and everything looks so nice 
on a slide this big. I also have this shot, and this is a shot that I had taken over the summer and had sat on my desk until I had more 4x5 slide to take in. I'm really happy with the exposures on this stuff. I like that, you know, I caught some of the, the leaves overhanging the water there, and the range of contrast is really nice. Uh, you know, like, it's not super blown out along the tree line on the far shore there, and you're also not losing like a ton of like anything here in like the darker area. All right, here we are with the uh, Epson V700 and I'm gonna scan these four x five transparencies. So I'll show off uh, scanning probably just like the first two and then jump to the editing a little bit and touching up the color a bit. So I'm just using the uh, regular uh, Epson four x five holder for the V700 and it just sits here uh, inside the scanner. We have to put it emulsion side up on the holder. So I'm going to place it just like this and it just sits into the holder. Um, this flips back down and close that up. And then we would do the same with the second one here. Drop it in, click it down, flatbed scanning. Uh, easily one of the more tedious portions of the whole shooting on film thing. I'm gonna use this blower. I've also got just this uh, anti-static cloth, so I wipe everything down as best that I can, close it up, put it in, drop the lid, and we are scanning with Silverfast. Everybody has like different opinions on different programs and everything, but I'm just using Silverfast and I've come to quite like Silverfast. So we are going to pre-scan. Yo, check it out. <laughs> It's coming in. Uh, so, of course, this just gives us the initial scan and then we will select our two frames and then punch in the settings that we want. We can just drag in our frame size to four by five. Um, and I can also rotate it in one second. Uh, rotate clockwise. So there is one and then the bottom one down here. So we select the one that we want and then uh, just because I'm not doing anything I guess super crazy with this but we can go I mean like I could scan to like 3200 if I really wanted to but let's just keep it at like 2400 that's still gonna give me a big file um, and we will put this where we want to put it in a second. I'm not gonna touch any of this stuff at the moment. I'm gonna leave the sharpen on to 80 because I, there is just like a level of softness that comes with using the flatbed scanner and everybody has like a crazy stance on like sharpen and like auto sharpen and unsharpen stuff. So I'm just using a bit and then I'll probably add a bit more even in Photoshop just to like define like the grain and like the details just like a little bit more. So once these settings are good, then uh, I'm also going to not forget to turn on the infrared scan. The infrared scan is a secondary scan that can be done only on color stuff. There's an issue with it on standard black and white stuff because of silver in the film, but infrared scan will go across the image again and it will work to detect and remove, for the most part, like a lot of surface um, dust and hair and any stuff that is just on it because it's a flatbed scanner and it's four by five, so the film itself is pretty big and I'm just gonna leave it on automatic again. Everything here looks good. And now I will batch scan. Okay, I've scanned all six and here we are in Photoshop and we're gonna open them up and uh, check them out a little bit. I'm gonna just do a little bit of color correction so that I can shift them in the direction that I want just because it is a little old. I don't know exactly how old this slide stuff was, but it has shifted a little more to like, greenish yellow in certain areas. So we're just gonna uh, touch them up just a little bit. I'm gonna show that off. And then of course, uh, the final product. Let's do just a uh, color bounds layer on here. So we can see in like the sky that should be more blue. It does have this kind of greenish tint to it. So I just want to really touch that in the highlights and bring things down a little bit more so. But if I go too red, then things start to look a little strange on that side. So let's add some magenta here and we'll see if things can kind of shift the way I want it to. So 
So just removing some of this color cast that looks a little strange um, and kind of a little less natural. So that nudges things more to looking a little more natural for the colors. Of course, I didn't spend like a ton of time adjusting it, but you can see if I just toggle it on and off, uh, just kind of injecting a little more magenta and a little more blue into it. It helps to remove this kind of yellowish green that is a little kind of overall here. So as I mentioned before, I am gonna go in and do like an unsharpened mask. So it will kind of help to define things a little bit more. Some people are super against that and that's fine. Uh, I'm not really out here to win any awards, but, but I do find that if you do it just like a little bit, then you can help to um, help to define some of the grain and some of the edges on the details. So if we, because it is a big image, we can like kind of up our settings a lot here. If I go in like way, way, uh, zoomed in then you can see like that is the unsharpened version and then this sharpens it so it's not like overbearing but it does help to kind of define some of the edges and like some of the grain and just the overall sharpness of the image and if i really want to you know i can also go in and do uh just like a little bit of contrast and like bring down the shadows and then like bring up everything else. But um, I think for the most part, I'm pretty happy with uh, the exposure and everything, just how this one looks. Like I don't wanna bring it down too much. I like being able to see just a little bit in the shadows. So that's kind of what I'm just doing for most of these. Like if I go on to the second one as well, uh, we rotate this and then we do the same kind of color balance again, where I just, especially in the sky here, it's not looking like the blue that you want. Like you can see in that area, if you really look that it is not the colors that it should be. Uh, again, if we do like our before and after, so this is just how originally it looks and it does look a little more sickly, like greenish yellow. Uh, so that bumps it just in the direction that I want. So this looks better for the blue. There is a little more just like magenta overall. Um, and I want a little more contrast in this one because of, you know, the, uh, the, the middle area. That looks pretty solid. And uh, like, it's just enough kind of contrast to make things pop. And like the color is looking way better on that. So I'm gonna take care of the rest of them and then I'm gonna show off uh, the final shots. Hey, welcome back. So uh, I shot all that stuff, yeah, back at the beginning of October, which feels like so long ago. And I think it just kind of got sidelined. The Velvia stuff, I think in general looks really good. Uh, so let's take a look at the final scans. Four by five transparency or slide or reversal or whatever you want to call it looks really, really amazing in person when you physically are able to look at them like on a light source. And it's super hard to convey that in the videos when talking about slide film stuff, but trust me, it's like an incredible kind of feeling when you can take a look exactly at the image that you captured right on the film itself. Thank you so much for watching and, uh, you know, subscribe and like and comment and uh, share it around and talk about this to your mom and dad and your friends and family and your cat and your dog, whoever is nearby. There is information in the description below for uh, the Analog Resurgence PO Box, the Patreon. Also, uh, information for uh, Pro 8 um, for like Super 8 16. 
uh, services and stuff. There's more stuff coming up with them soon. A little bit of 16 millimeter for the first time in a little while. Just when you thought I was done, I'm gonna do the Patreon uh, shout outs because everybody who supports the channel is amazing in any way that you can. It goes a long way in uh, allowing me to do more of this stuff and build it up more and more as time goes on. Abby Henderson, Abo Sylvia, Alex Zonkin, Alain Sierra, Alan Thomason, Amadeus Ferrovold, Anna Luisa Barnardez, BW, Bearded, Benjamin MacArthur, Bingling Zoo, Blake Moeller, Brian DeMartin, Caleb Churchill, Carson Fuller, Carta Manier, Chalian Chris, Chaz Allen, Chris Baltiera, Chris Rohrer, Clifford Graham, Colin McGreal, Colin Jackson, Dan Gross, David Kelsey, David Pirinelli, Derek Konigsberg, Edwin Goodwin, Emma Clyden, Frederick Kulatunga, Futugu, Gareth Tennant, Gaurav Pai, Generation Podcast, Jermaine Saez, Juliana Lapetalina, Gwen Clement, Henry and Megan, Ian Hamilton Cummings, Ian Farber, Ian Frank, Jayon Lee, James Gillespie, Jamie Maldonado, Jeremy Lee Camp, Jeremy McDonald, Jonathan Hurd, Jordan Wysong, Newt Holstrader, Landers, Larry O, Luciana Kuoto, Luke Manterfield, Matt Bacon, Matthew Ellers, Michael Kellett, Nick Kosh, Noah Katznelson, Orlando Perez, Ramblings from Canada, Raul Suet de Morris, Riley Combs, RTH, Ryan Peters, Scott Vansel, Scott Walker, Sean Williams, Super 8 Skateboard Company, Taylor Brown, Taylor Kizella, Thomas Wibley, Tiago Almanca, Tobias Erickson, Travis Tobin, and Tycora Thomas. I'm sorry if I mispronounced anybody's name. All of you are super amazing for supporting this channel. And an extra special thank you to all of those on the Patreon who have gone above and beyond. Uh, and that is Carson Fuller, Chalian Christ, David Pirinelli, Ian Hamilton Cummings, Super 8 Skateboard Company, and Taylor Brown. Uh, so thank you all so much uh, for anybody who supports this channel in any way, in any way that you can. Um, and I'll see you all soon.